welcome everyone to the Bible study tonight. And I pray that the Lord will keep us awake so that the word will enrich every life tonight in Jesus' name. I'm so happy you are here. Are you happy you are here? And the Lord is going to do you good. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for our brethren, brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, our children, our youths, everyone here tonight. And we're asking, O oh Lord, to send forth your word of comfort and of love to everyone in Jesus' name. Like a shepherd, seek your people. Like a shepherd, receive your people. Like a shepherd, protect your people. We're asking, O oh Lord, as you are blessing those of us who are here, you bless all those who are connected to the Bible study tonight, all over the country and all over the continent of Africa and beyond, in Jesus' name. Bless your people. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You can see that. We're coming to John chapter 10. Those who have been coming regularly will know that we're studying the gospel according to St. John. And now we come to chapter 10, reading from verse 22 to verse 30. Look at it in your Bible, John chapter 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him. And said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But she believed not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. That's the passage we are looking at today. You'll see one sentence here in verse 24. It says, Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? They were thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he came to say they were not very sure really. Who he was is Jesus, is Christ, is the Son of God, is the Messiah, is our Savior, is our Shepherd, is the door into the kingdom of God, and is the one anointed and sent by the Father to bring sinners out of their sin and bring them into salvation and into the care of the Lord. You see these Jews, they came face to face with the greatest man that ever lived since the world was created. Jesus Christ, greater than Moses, greater than Abraham, and greater than Joshua, greater than Elijah and Elisha, greater than David, greater than all men that ever lived before this time. And they came face to face with this Jesus, this Savior. They came face to face with this great shepherd of the sheep. And yet, they missed the great gift that they came to give them. They came and they sat with the greatest teacher that the world ever knew. And yet, they learned nothing of his beneficial knowledge. Can you think about that? That Jesus Christ, this teacher come from God, that came with knowledge the knowledge that he had got from all eternity. And he came to them and they sat before him and they listened to him and yet they got nothing. I pray that will not happen to you. 
Here was the Savior before them, and they were not saved. Here was the shepherd before them, and they were not protected. Here was the promised Messiah, the expected king, but they belittled him, and they lost incalculable blessings. They would have been happy if they had seen Abraham. If Abraham were to come back to life, they would have been happy. They would say, I saw Abraham. And if Moses were to come back and they saw Moses, they would say, you know, I saw Moses today. And if the king of Israel, that is David, had come to them, they would have said, I saw him myself. But here was somebody greater than Abraham, somebody greater and higher than Moses, somebody greater than David before them, and yet they failed to see. The failure to see and believe was because of the blinding influence of their leaders. Leaders are very important. Leaders can lead us in the right way, or they can lead us in the wrong way. They allowed those religious leaders to stand between them and the Savior. And so they didn't have any mind of their own, any sight of their own, any understanding of their own, any conclusion of their own. Those Jews could only see through the eyes of the blind leaders before them. They could only think through the blind and the mind of those leaders that were hardened already. It is still so today in many circles, in many places, it's still so today all over the world. The people cannot see directly themselves. They have the Bible, they cannot see directly. And they use the eyeglasses and the colored glasses and the blind, the blindness of their leaders to lead them into ways that are not right. But here, as we study today, we're going to look at this. I pray the Lord will open your eyes. Yeah. You will understand. Yeah. Say, I will understand. I will. As you understand, you are going to receive. I will receive. And as you receive, you are going to believe in Jesus' name. Yeah. And the blessing of receiving the word of God and benefiting from the word of God, that blessing will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. The topic tonight is the salvation and the security of his sheep. The salvation and the security of his sheep. The Lord Jesus Christ is shepherd and he has sheep. He said, I am the good shepherd and I gave my life for the sheep. And as you become a sheep, you want to understand the salvation there. And then as he gives you salvation, the security, that's what we're talking about, those two things, the salvation one, the security two of his sheep. And I pray that if you have not been saved, it's so very easy, you come out of where you have been, and then you come to the Savior, he's waiting for you, and with open hands to receive you and embrace you. And if you were saved before, but somehow, somehow something happened, and you stretch away, I pray that tonight we'll come back to the embrace of the Lord Jesus as your Savior, as your substitute, as a final sacrifice, and as your shepherd in Jesus' name. The salvation and the security of his sheep. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the inescapable damnation of skeptical sinners. Sinners that scorn. Sinners that are skeptic. Sinners that remain in their sin and they even walk against the light that is coming to them. The inescapable damnation of skeptical sinners. Number two, the incontestable description of the shepherd's sheep. The sheep that have come to the Lord Jesus Christ and they have received him as Savior, as Lord as a final sacrifice, as the one that made atonement for them, as the one through whom all their sins will be forgiven. When you come to the Lord like that, you become a child of God, a follower of Christ, and you become the sheep of the shepherd. Now we're going to see the incontestable description of the shepherd's sheep. Number three, the, inesca the inestimable declaration of the saints' security. 
Sinners don't have security. They cannot talk of the sinner security. Saint security. Backsliders do not have security. We're talking about saint security. Prodigal sons and prodigal daughters do not have security. We're talking about the same security. You see many people, they don't understand. They talk about security, the security of everyone. Everyone that comes to church. But you want to understand, the visible church has a lot of different people, kinds of people. The sinners in the visible church, the backsliders in the visible church, the prodigal sons and prodigal daughters in the, in the visible church, but there are saints in the visible church too. And the security Jesus Christ provides is the security for the saints, not for the sinners, not for the backsliders, and not for the people that have not been born again. The inestimable declaration of the saints' security. We're coming to number one. Number one, tell me. <laughs> Wonderful. I knew you would say that you're a good church. The inescapable damnation of skeptical sinners. We're coming to chapter, we're coming to chapter 10, and we're reading from verse 22. It says in verse 22, and it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. What that is telling us is that when you talk of winter, it was very cold, biting cold. It was uh, at a temperature below zero degrees centigrade or degrees Fahrenheit. And this was so very cold and yet Jesus Christ remained in the ministry. He was preaching the word of God, was explaining things to the people, he was interpreting the word to the people, he was presenting himself to them as the Savior. And even though there was winter, even though it was very cold, he will not allow that, the season or the weather to hinder him. He will still do the work of God and we are to be his followers and we are to do what he did and we are to keep on doing the work of God summer, autumn, winter whatever it is, the work will continue rainy season, dry season whatever it is, the work of God will continue, it's so hot and it's so cold and yet Jesus Christ continued every time and we are the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ and we're going to continue with him in Jesus name and it says in verse 23 and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch Jesus Christ mixed with the people, interacted with the people. He will stand before them and teach them. And then after teaching, he will go around. They had access to him. There are some people that are inaccessible. There are some people, you cannot find them. There are some leaders, you cannot touch them. There are some leaders, you never see them. But he was available, and as he was available, they had any question to ask, they could ask the question. And they had anything confusing them, they could tell him that this was confusing them them like now they came in verse 24 and then came the Jews round about him and said unto him how long dost thou make us to doubt if thou be the Christ tell us plainly look at what they were saying they said we, we want to know are you the Christ are you the Messiah are you the Savior? Are you the one we're expecting that will come? How long are you making us to doubt? But you see, their question was not sincere. And if you think about who made them to doubt, Jesus did not make them to doubt. And so you, you, you want to find out who made them doubt them. To start with, let us understand why they are not people that believe that this is the Christ and this is the Savior. Of course they were. If those other people believed, what were these ones looking at that they did not believe? Let me show you John chapter 1. The people that already knew that Jesus Christ is the Savior, is the Lamb of God. And there was no doubt in them at all. And I pray that there will be no doubt in your mind. Look at John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 41. John chapter 1 verse 41. He first findeth his own brother Simon and says unto him, We have found the Messiah which has been interpreted the Christ. 
You see, this person already knew that. Even in chapter 1, and these people are coming out saying, how are you making us to doubt? And for so long, have we doubted? Tell us the real sin. If you are really the Christ, look at that chapter 1, verse 45. In verse 45, Philip findeth. Nathaniel, and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. We found him. Moses wrote about him. We found him. The prophets wrote about him. And we're very sure they said the Christ. Look at uh, verse 49 here, verse 49. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. That's in chapter 1. That there was assurance in the heart of these people I've read about. And he said, This is the Christ. Look at chapter 2. In chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 11. Chapter 2, verse 11, there shouldn't be any reason why they should have doubted. In verse 11, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. And his disciples believed on him. They believed. There were those that believed. They considered the evidence before them. They considered what Jesus Christ had done. And they said there's no shadow of doubt in our mind, in our heart. This is the Christ. Look at chapter 3 verse 2. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know. There's no doubt here, no doubt here, no confusion here, no unbelief here. We know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be what's in. How then did these people come? And he said, how long are you making us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, then tell us plainly. It was very clear. Look at chapter 4. In chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 42. Chapter 4 of John, verse 42. And said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Any doubts there? I said any doubts there? These were Samaritans, and they had Jesus Christ, just one message, and they had what the, the woman had said, come see a man that told me everything that I ever did, is this not the Christ? And they heard him themselves, and they said, now we believe this is the very son of God. God. We're looking at chapter 5 verse 32. Chapter 5 verse 32. There is, it says, there's another that uh, beareth witness of me. And I know that he's with the witness, which he witnesseth of me, is true. He sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. You were sent to John, and he told you, I came as a forerunner before him, and I saw the Holy Ghost coming upon him, and the Father told me that is the one that baptizes in the Holy Ghost. How come that these people then came to Jesus and said, we're doubting, you make us to doubt. If you are the Christ, then tell us. He had told them over and over, and thank God there were people that believed, and I'm among them. The believers. I said, I am among the believers. Look at chapter 6. Chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 69. Chapter 6, we're reading from verse 69. It tells us, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Look at chapter 6 now. It says, Peter was talking to the rest of the apostles and the disciples said, we believe and we know that thou art the Christ, the very Son of the living God. Look at chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 26. Chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 26 about the assurance of the people had about Jesus Christ that this is the Christ. Chapter, uh, chapter 7, verse 26, I'm looking at this. It says, But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing you know, unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that? This is the very Christ. You see, these people were sure, and they were wondering, do our leaders know, do our rulers know that this is the very Christ? Verse 46 of that chapter 7. In verse 46, the officers answered, Never man speak 
like this man. We've never seen anybody like this. This is unique. And this is singular. And this person, out of history, we've never found anybody like him. Look at chapter 8 and verse 13. Chapter 8 and verse 30, it says in verse 30, as I speak these words, many believed on him. Many believed on him. And so all these people that now came and they said, how long are you going to make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. They really didn't know what they were doing. Look at chapter 9, verse 22. In chapter 9, verse 22, these words speak experience because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was the Christ, he shall be put out of the synagogue. That was the real problem. The leaders had said, if anybody comes plainly and says very clearly that this is the Christ, they'll drive that person away from the temple, from their synagogue. But all the same, look at verse 38. Somebody still believed, and he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. You'll be among the worshippers. You'll be among the people that believe that there'll be no confusion in your heart at all in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 10, chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 42. And many believed on him there. And many believed on him there. And so these skeptical sinners had no excuse at all. Let's come back again to what they said in uh, John chapter 10, reading now from verse 24. It says, Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Let's ask, ask ourselves the question, Who made them to doubt? their leaders which kind of leaders traditional leaders because of their tradition they wanted to keep their tradition therefore they blindfolded the people and they confused the people and they influenced the people that they'll not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who made them to doubt their leaders the blind leaders they were blind to the truth they were blind to the Savior they were blind to the provision of our salvation and because they were blind they led these other people and they made them to doubt who were the people that made them doubt? They were leaders. They were place-seeking leaders. Place-seeking leaders. They had position in the synagogue. They had a place in the, in the temple. And because of that religious position, they wanted to keep that position by all means. And if these people went and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, they thought they would lose their authority. They would lose their position. And these place-seeking leaders made the people to doubt. The people said, the Jews said, how long does thou make us to doubt? Jesus did not make you to doubt. Your leaders made you to doubt. What kind of leaders were they? Religious leaders. You see, there are people, they'll protect religion more than their own soul. They'll protect religion more than righteousness. And they'll protect religion more than the revelation that is coming in from heaven. And these religious leaders, because we're protecting religion, that's the reason why they were doubting. And now they were putting it on Jesus. They said, how long? You make us to doubt. Who made them doubt? These were leaders. They were hardened leaders. They hardened their hearts against the truth. You see, when you're hardened against the truth, if you're an individual, if you are a solitary person, a solitary soul, and you're hardening your own heart, that's your own business. But when you are a leader, and the truth is coming, and the truth has been exposed, and here is the Savior, and here is the final sacrifice. This is the Lamb of God that taketh the sins of the world away, and you're a leader over the people. There are people looking up to you, and then you're hardening your heart. Other people are going to follow. And because you are not seeing the truth, they will not see the truth. And so the people now came, they said, Jesus, tell us now, are you the real Christ? How long are you going to make us to doubt? It was not making them doubt. Who made them to doubt? I said, who made them to doubt? Their leaders, they were uncircumcised leaders. Their hearts were not circumcised because God had promised them. God had said that he will circumcise their heart and the heart of their seed so that they would love the Lord with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind. 
But because they didn't go for that circumcision of heart, the hardness was there, the coupling was there, the blindness was there, the ignorance was there, the sin was there. Therefore, they passed it on to these people who made them to doubt. Tell me, church, their leaders, they are hypocritical leaders. When a leader is hypocritical and will not follow after the truth, it will make other people doubt. The thing everybody should believe that we know this, the way we walk in therein, they will not be able to walk therein. And then the people are saying, we're confused. What's confusing you? The word of God is very clear. And they will say that we don't understand. We don't know which is the way and which, uh, which way are we going to go. Because they were under the authority of those leaders let me remind you again leaders number one traditional leaders they make people doubt number two blind leaders they make people doubt number three please seeking leaders they make people doubt number four religious leaders they make people doubt number five hardened leaders they make people doubt number six uncircumcised leaders number seven hypocritical leaders I pray that they will not have such power and such influence over your life in Jesus' name. Now, let's come back to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 19. John chapter 1, verse 19. And this is the record of John. When, when the Jews sent the priests, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem uh, to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed, and he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked to him, What then? Are thou Elias? And he said, No, I am not. Art thou that prophet? He answered, No. Then said they to him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us, What seest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As said the prophet Isaiah, and they which were sent were the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then? It, if thou be not the Christ, nor Elias, nor neither the prophet, John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you, whom ye know not. He it is, whom coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes lasheth and not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Look at verse 29 now. In verse 29, the next day, you'll see Jesus coming unto him and says, tell me out aloud, Behold the Lamb of God. What has he come to do? We take it away, the sin of, of Israel, of the Jews, of all of the Gentiles, of who? Of the whole world. That's Christ. And John pointed him out. Were they not listening? What did they then come to say that you are making us to doubt? It was very clear to any. And these were Jews that had said to John, and he said, Who art thou? Who do you make of yourself? Are oh, you baptizing in water? And he said, No, I'm not he. I'm not the Christ. But he's standing right in your midst, although you have not known him because you are not saved. But he is the one that the Father had sent. Look at chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 17, it says, And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? They said, You're doing these things. You're turning water into wine, and you're doing this miracle. What other sign are you going to show to us so we can be convinced that you are the Christ? This is chapter 2. And then in chapter 10, they are coming and they say, How long does thou make us to doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Look at chapter 3, verse 25. In chapter 3, verse 25, you see, if somebody wants to doubt, it's voluntary. They were doubting because they wanted to doubt. 
they were doubting because they wanted to follow their leaders. They were doubting because they preferred their leaders above the Lord Jesus Christ. They were doubting because they preferred darkness rather than light. I pray you will not be like that. Chapter 3, verse 25. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And he came to John and said unto him, Rabbi, teacher, master, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. Look at this. They were comparing Jesus with John. They came to John. They said, you know, do you know about this person that came to you? You baptized him in water, and not many people are following him, and they are not, you don't even have as many disciples following after you. Look at verse 27. And John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. He yourself bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that has the bride is the bridegroom. Of the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, tell me the rest, but I must decrease. That's John, he believed. I, will, I believe. I said I believe. And then you'll say, like John said, he, Christ, must increase and I must decrease. You see, he really believed that this is the Christ. And there should not be any doubt in anybody because John has said it. The miracles also showed everything that this is the Christ. Chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 11. Chapter 7, and we're reading from verse 11. It tells us in chapter 7, verse 11, it says, Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. Some said, is a good man. Others said, nay, but he deceiveth the people. However, how be it, no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. And then we're told in verse 14 now, but about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and he taught. And the Jews marvel, saying, How noise this man let us have never learned. And Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Now they were saying, Tell us plainly whether you are the Christ or not. He told them here, he told them very plainly, he said, The Father sent me, and my doctrine is not mine. My doctrine belongs to the one that sent me. Well, eventually you understand, as these people were asking, tell us plainly. We should be asking them the question that uh, Elijah asked the people in First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 21. First Kings chapter 18, reading from verse 21. Elijah came on to the people and said, How long hold ye between two opinions? That was the real problem. That was the real problem. They were halting between two opinions. Do we follow the Pharisees or do we follow Jesus Christ? Do we follow the blind leaders or follow the true shepherd? They were halting between two opinions. There are many people like that today. You come to the Bible study, you hear the clear word of God. And the word of God says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And the way is shown to you. Turn away from darkness and turn to the light. Turn away from your sin and turn to the Savior. Turn away from tradition and turn to the truth. Turn away from religion and turn to righteousness that Jesus Christ has provided on the cross of Calvary. And then you're still halting between two opinions. You will decide today. I said you'll decide today. Uh, look, at, uh, look at Romans, Romans chapter 2. In Romans chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 3. These people, they were without excuse because Jesus Christ had done what no other man has ever done. In Romans chapter 2 verse 3, And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest 
them that do such sin and doest the same that thou shall escape the judgment of God that thou shall escape the judgment of God they were not thinking about the judgment and they were thinking well the Pharisee told me this, so they confused me. And the blind leaders told me this, so they confused me. On the final day, when you stand before the Almighty God, you stand by yourself. You're not going to say, ask him, is my leader. Ask him, he was blind, so he led me to blindness. Ask him, he was hiding, so he made me hard. Ask him, he was hypocritical, so I was hypocritical. Everyone will stand by himself. Look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2. Reading from verse 3. Hebrews chapter 2. We're reading from verse 3. Here in verse 3, it tells us in Hebrews, it says, chapter 2, verse 3, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? The salvation that Jesus Christ brought, the redemption that Jesus Christ brought, eternal life that Jesus Christ brought. It says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? I will not neglect. You will not neglect in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 23, Matthew chapter 23, we're reading from verse 23. Matthew chapter 23, verse 33, 33. Matthew chapter 23, verse, tell me, 33. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? You see, the people that remain blind, when they should see. The people that remain in their sin, when the Savior is calling upon them. The people that remain in darkness, when the light of the world has come. The people that remain in doubt and unbelief, when Christ has come, and this is the Christ, the very Christ, the Savior, the final sacrifice, our substitute and our shepherd, when he comes, instead of coming to him, they said he was still doubting. How long dost thou be caused to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly, Jesus is the Christ. I said, Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Savior. Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, it will take your sins away. And I pray you will not doubt anymore. I said you will not doubt anymore. He is everything for us. If you are sick, he will heal you. As a sinner, I will save you. As a believer, I will sanctify you. He will provide everything for you. There's no more doubting. You will not be a doubter in Jesus' name. Amen. We come to point number two. The incontestable description of the shepherd's sheep. The incontestable description of the shepherd's sheep. Now we need to make it very clear. Who are the sheep of the shepherd? Who are the followers of the Savior? Who are the people that are saved already? And they have eternal life. Let's look at verses uh, chapter 10 of John, uh, verses 26 and 27. John chapter 10, uh, verses 26 and 27. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. What do you learn from that? If you are part of the sheep, then you will believe. If you are not believing, then you are not part of my sheep. It says, but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Who are the people we refer to as the sheep of the shepherd, as a follower of Christ, as the children of God, as the people that will be in that eternal sheepfold and it will be in heaven forever and ever. I pray you'll be there. What do we know of them? Number one, these are people that hear him. They hear him. Look at verse 28, the, uh, verse 27 there. My sheep hear my voice. Not only that, number two, these are people that believe on him. They believe on him. They believe in him. They believe in him. Look at verse 26. But 
ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep as I said unto you. Number three, they are known by him. They are known by him and therefore he can call them, he can call them by name. Look at verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. I know them. It's not just somewhere that says I'm a child of God, I'm a sheep of the Lord, I'm a saint and all that. It takes the Lord himself, the Savior himself, the shepherd himself to know you. They are known by him. Number four, look at uh, verse 27. The latter part of that verse 27, and they follow me, the followers. Those who follow the Lord, those are the sheep of the Lord. Take them up one by one. Number one, they hear him. Look at chapter 10, verse 27 again. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. If you are one of the sheep, a young person, you'll hear the voice of the Lord. If you are one of the sheep, an adult, a a brother, a sister, a father, a mother. This is a qualification. You will hear his voice. They hear him. Look at chapter 4, verse 42 again. Chapter 4, verse 42 again. He's calling you. It says, it's come to call us to repentance. And if you are really part of the ship, you have heard that he came to call us to repentance. And he came to call, to call us to salvation. And you are saved. Chapter 4, chapter 4 verse 42. And said, unto the woman now we believe everybody now we believe you'll be a believer in jesus name you know that's how easy it is to become a sheep of the lord that's how easy it is to become a real child of god you leave your own belief you leave all the idols you believe before and you leave all the whatever it is ideology philosophy you believe before and you know that this is the christ who died for you and you can say now i believe and that moment you believe eternal life will come to you now we believe not because of thy sin uh, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this indeed is the Christ the Savior of the world the Savior of the world look at chapter 5 verse 24 chapter 5 verse 24 it says verily verily I say unto you he that heareth my word that's the first thing you must hear the word the word of repentance you must hear the word the word of salvation you must hear the word the word of his grace he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. And he shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You pass from death unto life. Yeah. Eternal life will be yours. Yeah. Salvation will be yours. Yeah. The smile of heaven will be upon you because you have heard he called you. And then you rose up and you left your darkness, you left your sin, and you came to the Savior. And whosoever comes to him, he will not reject, he will not reject you. Chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 45, it is written in your prophets and they shall all be taught of God. They shall all be taught of God. Every man therefore that has heard and has learned of the Father cometh unto me. When you hear, you don't, you don't just sit down there. When you hear, you don't pull back. When you hear, you don't remain in your sin. I've heard the Savior. I've seen the light. And he's calling me. And he says, you are taught of the Father. And then you come unto him. And as you come, he'll receive you in Jesus' name. Number two, who are the sheep of the shepherd? Those who are the follower of Jesus Christ. Number two, the believer on him. The believer on him. Look at Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. I will read him from verse 15. Mark chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 15. I'm going to back up to verse 14 to make the proper connection. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Tell me what follows there. Tell me out aloud. 
be, you repent ye and believe the gospel. You cannot believe the gospel, the good news, if you don't repent. If you don't see that there is a Savior and the Savior is calling you and you sit down there in sin, the Savior is not going to come and sit down with you in that sin. If you truly believe and if you're going to believe that that's the Savior is the light, you stand up, you get up out of that darkness, you come to the light. It is your moving away from the darkness that shows you believe in the light. It is moving away from sin that shows you believe in the Savior. It is moving away from the devil, from Satan, and coming to the shepherd that shows you believe in the shepherd. It is your coming away from idol worship and coming to the living God that shows you really believe. And so you cannot just say, I believe, I believe, and you're sitting down there. I believe, I believe, and you're still you know, doing something wrong. I believe, I believe, you're still saying your sin. You come out of sin, you come to the Savior, he will save you. He will receive you. He will not cast you away and is going to remain with you forever in Jesus' name. Not only that, you know, he tells us in John chapter 10, John chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 27, it says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And I know them. You see, there are many people, they say, I've received the Lord. The question is, has he received you? The people there are some people say, I believe, I'm a church goer, I go to church, but have you come to Christ? When it says, I know them, on the final day, it's going to tell some people, some people who are saying, I belong to Christ, I'm a child of God, I'm even a preacher. Can you think about that? I'm a preacher, I'm a minister, I'm a member of a good standing church, and I call him Lord. Look at this, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. You see, that's the secret, doing the will of the Father in heaven. When you come to Christ, it gives you grace and it gives you strength. And it gives you the enablement so that by the grace of God now, you're a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And what you are not able to do before when you are in sin, as you come to the Savior, His grace will help you. You'll do it in Jesus' name. You'll be able to do the will of God. Look at verse 22. Many will say unto me, in that day, Lord, Lord, they always call him Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works, and then will I profess unto them, tell me, I never knew you. He knows the sheep. He knows the sheep. The people who say I'm a member, the people who say I'm a follower, the people who say I'm a Christian, the people who say I'm a believer, I'm a believer and I go to my church too. I'm a believer. I read the Bible too. I'm a believer and we have our own conference too. I'm a believer and we do this and we do this but they have not come out of darkness to come to the light. They have not come out of sin to come to the Savior. They have not come out of their idols to come to the living God. They have not come out of their bad habit to come to the life of Christ. They have not come from all their past to come to something new and something different. They might say, Lord, Lord, we pray. Lord, Lord, we fast. Lord, Lord, we go to retreat. Lord, Lord, we go to conference. Lord, Lord, we go to convention. And Jesus will say, but I never knew you. You are not part of my sheep because my sheep, number one, my sheep hear me. Number two, my sheep believe me. Number three, my sheep are known by me. I pray he will know you. He will know you as his own sheep. And you will not just be professing and proclaiming that you know him when he's not going to be a witness concerning you. Look at Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, and here we're reading from verse 19. And the question I have for you is, do you really know the Lord? I come to deeper life, that's not the question. Do you really know the Lord? Well, I have a Bible, I've been reading the Bible, that's not the question. Do you really know the Lord? Well, I was born into a Christian family, that's not the question. Do you really know the Lord and does the Lord know you? Does he know that 
that you are out of darkness, out of sin, out of your evil, out of your bad habit, does he really know? Let's look at uh, Second Timothy chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 19. It says in verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. The foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, it says, The Lord knoweth them that are is. The Lord knoweth them that is. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ do what? Depart from iniquity. There's a change of life. There's a change of character. There's a change of habit. I'm now following the Lord. Since I became born again, the places I used to go, I go there no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. And the things I used to wear, I wear them no more. The things I used to drink, I drink them no more. And the things I used to smoke, I smoke them no more. And the things I used to watch, I watch them no more. Because in change has now come. Anyone that says he belongs to Christ, he says over here, everyone that nameth the name of Christ, let them depart from iniquity. And then God will know you that you are one of his own. If it had not happened before tonight, it will happen. Grace will come to your life. New life will come to you in Jesus' name. And when number, number four, they follow him. Look, come back to chapter 10 of John. John chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 27 again. John chapter 10, and we're reading from verse 27. It says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You see that? They follow me. That's the evidence that you are really part of the sheep. That's the evidence that you really belong to the Lord. That you are born again. It's, it's easy for anybody to say, I'm born again, I'm born again. Are you following him? It says for anybody to say, I'm a member of the church. Are you following him? It says, my sheep hear my voice. And my sheep, uh, they, they hear that voice. And I know them and they follow me. Look at chapter 10 of John verses 4 and 5. Chapter 10 verses 4 and 5. It says, so when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them and the sheep. What's the next word there? follow him and the sheep follow him what jesus will not go if you're part of a sheep you'll not go there what jesus will not do if you're part of a sheep you'll not do it because you have the grace of christ the strength of christ the love of christ you have the understanding of christ the mind of christ and you will do only what she wants you to do verse 4 again when he put it forth his own he goeth before them and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Look at verse 5. And a stranger will they not follow. A false prophet will they not follow. A strange, a person preaching strange doctrine, they will not follow. Somebody who says, send the information through the internet, uh, send your offerings, send this and send that, they will not follow. A person who is using magic, they will not follow. An occultic person, even though he's carrying the Bible and is covering with the Bible, but he's occultic, they will not follow. A Satan worshiper, they will not follow. It says a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of of strangers they follow I will follow I'll follow Jesus all the days of my life I keep on following Jesus God will confirm it to your life in Jesus name John chapter 8 look at this John chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 11 she said no man Lord and Jesus said unto her neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more. Look at verse 12. Then speak Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Look at this. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. The darkness of idolatry. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. The darkness of uh, evil covenant. He that followeth me will not. Uh, walk in darkness the darkness of occultism secret society he that followeth me will not shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life 
Look at chapter 12 of John. John chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 26. John chapter 12. Reading from verse 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. You see that? If any man serve me, let him follow me. If you say you are following the Lord, you'll be serving the Lord. You'll not just say, you know, you're coming to the church, you go out of the church, you come in and you go out, you come in, you go out. And you have nothing doing for Christ. You are not interested in the service of the Lord. It's very doubtful if you have genuine experience of salvation. Look at this. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. You will follow the Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. Those who are the true sheep of the Lord, here is their character. Here is their characteristic. And here is their lifestyle. And here is their conviction. Here is their lifestyle. In Ephesians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. You say you're a child of God. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And walk in love, not in hatred. And walk in love, not in malice. And walk in love not in violence and walk in love not in evil and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for his so smelling savor. If we say we are following Christ, here is what is telling us Christ, he man manifested love, Christ manifested grace and Christ manifested peace and that's exactly what you are going to do look at verse 3, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be. Tell me out loud. Once named among you has become a saint, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. We're looking at uh, First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 21. First Peter chapter 2. We're reading from verse 21. Here it tells us, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Leaving us an example that he should follow his steps. He has left us an example. An example of righteousness. An example of love. An example of grace. An example of uprightness. An example of holiness. The life he lived, that's what he has left us. And he says, if you are one of the sheep, number one, you will hear him. You will hear his voice. You will hear his word. Number two, you believe on him. And you don't believe in any other sin anymore. You come out of that a religion that does not save. And you come to the Lord, you believe completely, implicitly, totally, completely, entirely on him. And you are known by him, and you know him, and then you follow him. We're coming back now to John chapter 10, point number 3. The inestimable declaration of the saints' security. Inestimable declaration of the saints' security. We're looking at John chapter 10. And as we look at John chapter 10, we're reading from verse 28. It says, And I give unto them eternal life. It's talking about the sheep because it's coming from verse 27 to verse 28. The sheep that hear his voice, I give unto them eternal life. The sheep that believe on him, I give unto them eternal life. The sheep, the sheep that he knows that they have departed from iniquity and they are following after him, following after his footsteps, and they continue in his word. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Somebody said, Amen. Yeah. The true sheep shall never perish. The real saints of God shall never perish. The people who are following the Lord every day and every step in every action, they shall never perish. And then he goes on to say, Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Nobody will take the true sheep out of his hand. The shepherd will keep you, the shepherd will protect you. And the shepherd will give you grace to continue till the very end in Jesus' name. Now, this is what some people call eternal security. 
There's nothing wrong with security. There's nothing wrong even with eternal security. But you see what is wrong is they made that security to go over everybody. Everybody that you know is in church. Everybody that says I belong to Christ. Everybody that says I'm a follower of Christ. Even if they're not living right, they say there's eternal security. Even if they're backsliders, they say they're eternal, there's eternal security. Even if they're prodigal sons and they've gone to the far country and they're eating with the pigs they say they have eternal security no jesus said this security is talking about is for the sheep and we just saw the sheep now they are born again we just saw the sheep now they came out of sin they came to the savior we just saw the sheep now and jesus says i know them it's not just people who say they are performing miracles lord lord and they are not doing the will of god he's talking about the people who are doing the will of god and they follow him they follow his footsteps he said all those people the other name the bible has for them is saint the saints security the security for the saints he will not allow the devil to uh, touch you he will not allow the enemy to touch you he will protect you he'll preserve your life and as long as you say lord i want to serve you he'll keep on giving you strength as long as you are running back to calvary when there's any temptation there's any challenge and there's any difficulty you say lord i'm weak but you are strong hold my hand it will hold your hand as long as you're saying, I don't want to backslide, I will not backslide. I face this challenge, I face that challenge. But to Lord, keep me with you and keep me in your kingdom. He will keep you in the kingdom in Jesus' name. And he says, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. It has greater power. I say God has greater power. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. And let's see what he said. Number one, I give unto them eternal life. I give unto them eternal life. John chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 27. John chapter 6, we're reading from verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perishes. But for that which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for him as the Father sealed. It says, labor not for the meat that perisheth, but labor for the one that endures to eternal life. Look up here for a moment. You see there are people, they don't understand where body, you understand your body? Point to your body and let me see. Okay, you have body. We have soul. And we have the spirit. The soul is our intelligence. The soul is what give, gives us our mind. The soul is what makes us to understand. We're just conscious that this and this and this and that. And we know we're alive. That's our soul. But our spirit is what connects us with God. There are people, they labor only for their body. They go to work, they come back, they eat, they sleep, they rest, they clothe, they do whatever, they ride their cars. Everything is for the body. And they are not giving attention to their soul and to their spirit. But look at you here tonight. You let all the care of the body and you came here for your spirit and for your soul. And your soul, your spirit is growing in the Lord. That's what he's saying here. He's saying that you will labor for the things that that endure unto life eternal. Look at uh, look at First John chapter five. First John chapter five. I'm reading from verse thirteen. First John chapter five. We're looking at verse thirteen. It says, "These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have or do you have." eternal life and that she may believe on the name of the son of god it says we have eternal life what kind of life is that it's the life that is given to your spirit the one that is given to our body the body will die that means that the body does not have eternal life it is your soul your spirit that has eternal life and because that soul that spirit has eternal life when you live here you will go to heaven I said you will go to heaven. Uh, look at verse 18. Look at verse 18. How you protect that eternal life. We know that whosoever is born of God, tell me, sinneth not. Sinneth not. Temptation will come, but you will overcome. 
Satan will whisper, you say, no, I don't accept that. And you stay with Jesus for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. He that begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one, tell me, toucheth him not, toucheth him. What is that talking about? He's talking about your spirit, that that wicked one, that Satan, it will not touch your soul. It will not touch your spirit. All the things of darkness that people are doing, that makes them to go back into darkness, say, no, I'm not going to take part in that. And you're keeping yourself from that. Jesus said, if you're like that, you have that eternal life, and you're keeping your soul like that, keeping your spirit like that, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Who are the people he's talking about? You're not perishing in Jesus' name. When he says they shall never perish, come back now to chapter John chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 28. John chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 28. And see what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying. John chapter 10. Reading from verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life. Thank God I have eternal life. And they shall never perish. They shall never perish. Chapter 5 of John. John chapter 5. We're reading from verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, look at that, and believeth on him that sent me, has everlasting life. Hear this now, hear this now. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. The day of judgment will come and all the people that did not have eternal life in their spirit, all the people that did not have the life of Christ. Christ is eternal. His life is eternal. That's eternal life. When you have Christ in you, you have eternal life in you. Those who don't have Christ in them, they don't have eternal life, they go to judgment, they'll face condemnation. And then they'll be sent to hellfire. And then uh, when you come, and God looks at you. He looks at the record. He said, that's my child. That's my son. That's my daughter. He has Christ. He has eternal life. And because he has eternal life, then you pass on to heaven where you live forever and ever with God and with the angels and with the saints of God in Jesus' name. You will not come into condemnation. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 7, Hebrews chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7, reading from verse 25. It says in verse 25, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost, that, came, that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He's making intercession for you. His intercession prayer will avail for you in Jesus' name. And it will keep you until that final day. It will keep me until that final day. In 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 5, who are kept by the power of God. Those who remain in Christ, who are kept by the power of Christ. We are saved and will remain saved because we are kept by the power of God. We have eternal life and we don't backslide because we are kept by the power of God. Day by day, we live one day at a time, one moment at a time. Any challenge comes today and we pray for the grace to overcome the challenges of today and we are kept. Yesterday is gone, it was victorious, today is coming to an end, we are triumphant and then tomorrow will come, we will be more than conquerors. It will happen to you in Jesus' name. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. We are coming back to Jesus. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Now he tells us something wonderful, something great. Here is the promise the Lord has made. And here is the power that keeps us and upholds us. I'm going to read from verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life. Amen. Amen. And they shall never perish. Another amen. amen. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Look up here. God bless you. Look up here for a moment. You know, as, as you are born again, uh, somebody might threaten and say, you are born again, 
I'm going to do something, you'll forget that Christ. Sir, it's impossible. No man, no man with occultic power, no man with evil power, no man with any magical power, no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. Is God greater than your opposers? Is He greater than your persecutors? Is he greater than idol worshippers? Is he greater than those who are threatening? And they say, we're going to stop. We'll beat that Jesus out of you. Sir, it's impossible. Somebody tell me, impossible. impossible. Because he says, my father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man, praise the Lord, no man. Somebody say, no man. No man, no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. That means then we're secured until the final day in Jesus' name. But remember, remember, it's for the saints. Remember, it's for the righteous. Remember, it's for those who are following the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, it is for those who are not shielding to temptation. Remember, this security we're talking about is for those who have given their lives to the Lord completely and they are not looking back. Look at the first, uh, Second Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 12. It says, for for the which cause I also suffered these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Are you ashamed? Ashamed of following Christ? Ashamed of being a Christian? Ashamed of being the sheep or the shepherd? Tell me, give me your answer. Uh, from the middle of verse 12 now, for I know, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able. Our God is able. I'm persuaded that he is able, our shepherd is able. I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I'm persuaded. I said I'm persuaded. It will keep you until that final day in Jesus' name. Now we're coming to Jude chapter 1. Only one chapter, Jude, just one chapter. I want you to notice two verses here, verse 21 and then verse 24. Verse 21, verse 24. And I want you to look for one word there, the word keep. What word are you looking for? I said, what word are we looking for? Look, at, look for the word in verse 21. Look for the word in verse 24. Look at this, verse 21. Are you there? Jude, verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Keep yourself. Who does the keeping in verse 21? I said, who does the keeping in verse 21? Yourself, yourself, yourself. You will not see fire and run into the fire. Keep yourself away from the fire. You will not see a, a river and then jump into that river. Keep yourself away from that lagoon. You will not see destruction and jump into that destruction. Keep yourself away from that destruction. You will not see backsliding and jump into backsliding. Keep yourselves in the love of God. You are wise enough. You are reasonable enough. You know that you want to be in heaven forever am i talking about somebody there i said you want to be in heaven forever is that true or you want to go to hell no and then you see hell there and the gate of hell is open and satan is saying come 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 i want you i want to stay with you in hell forever you will keep yourself in the love of god you do that yourself that's how security is established that's how we have the same security in keeping yourself by the grace of god or the word of god and what prayer you're showing that you are a saint of god and you have the same security look at verse 24 now now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Who does the keeping in verse 24? Almighty, the Almighty God. On the one hand in verse 21, you keep yourself. On the other hand in verse 24, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. I'm looking at people that will stand. I said you will stand. You will not fall. The power of the Almighty will keep you to the end in Jesus' name. Temptations may come, you will overcome. Yeah. Trials may come, you will overcome. Yeah. 
the same security he will secure you now unto him that's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory uh, with exceeding joy on, and then he says to the only wise god our savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever yeah. amen it will keep you I said it will keep you. Yes. Thank God you will not fall. Yes. You keep yourself and then the almighty God show will keep you. And no man is able to pluck you out of the shepherd's hand. Yes. You will endure to the very end. Yes. I will endure to the very end. Why don't you stand up and promise the Lord, Lord, I'm not going to just stray away. I'm part of your sheep. I hear your word. I know your word. I've had the grace of God. I am saved. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. And I'm not going to stray back into evil. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. He will keep you. He will keep you. Are you facing challenge? Are you facing temptation? Are you facing trial? Are you almost getting tired? No, don't get tired. Don't get tired. Keep on moving. Keep on moving. Keep on serving the Lord. He will keep you until that final day. Sin will not overcome you. Satan will not overcome you. Evil past will not overcome you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He has a place for you in heaven. You will be there. He will keep you until that final day.